What's up, Burst TV? My name is Kelly. I'm a registered dental hygienist, a proud Burst ambassador, and today let's talk about suctions. <sighs> or in the pediatric world, I like to call Mr. Thirsty. Try that on your next kiddo patient. They will love it. Okay, so what is your favorite flavor of profi paste? I have watermelon, grape, strawberry, cinnamon, mint, cookie dough. Ooh, yeah. Let's do watermelon. Watermelon sugar. Ha. You got it. Oops, don't close on that. I'll suction for you. You just stay nice and open. Anyways, we've all drank through a straw, right? And we've all kind of noticed that tiny bit of excess that goes back into your drink. I know it's drink, but I like to say drank. Yes, also known as backwash. Yummy. And the dental suction is disgustingly no different. In 1998, the University of Montreal performed studies that concluded that backflow occurs in saliva ejectors, approximately 20 to 25%. In other words, this means one in five patients could receive backwash from the prior patient. The CDC, along with the ADA, urge dental practitioners to not allow their patients to close down on the suction or aka the saliva ejector. And I know this is going to be difficult because it's just a very, very common habit. But here are three factors that contribute to backflow. Number one, when the pressure in the patient's mouth is lower than the pressure in the suction. Number two, when the tubing connected to the suction is above the patient's mouth, the gravity will pull the fluid towards the patient's mouth. Number three, when you use the saliva ejector in conjunction with the high volume evacuator. And now for us dental professionals, it's always good to have a refresher that that tubing that connects to that saliva ejector is full of biofilm and the bacteria inside is metabolically active. The tubing is small and it lays stagnant between each patient and on weekends, creating an environment for bacteria to grow. So these lines should be cleaned routinely to reduce the bacteria count. And we all know this again, it's just good to have a refresher. <laughs> and while we're at it, dental office should be dismantling the high volume evacuator and the saliva ejector just to make sure that everything looks good, inspect it routinely, and just make sure it's nice and clean. And check out and see, some parts may even be autoclavable. Oh, and while you have it apart, check out your o-ring, make sure that looks good, make sure it's not damaged and it looks squeaky clean. This process helps make sure you have that proper seal. Also, if you notice when you're using your suction and the flow isn't as powerful, check your screens and traps, usually that's what it is. There are single use disposable options out there that you can look at that would just completely take away the dismantling infection process altogether. However, that would increase the plastic waste and that's after each appointment. According to the Eco Dentistry Association, dental waste is a significant contributor. Stemming from single use plastic products. So comment down below how we can save the planet and keep our patients healthy. <laughs> it is hard. Dental clinicians can further assist the health of our patients by switching up our routines, educating, and just creating those safe environments. I know it's hard, but don't ask your patient to close. Just simply ask them to stay open while you suction for them. And don't forget to take breaks. I don't know about you, but my jaw just kills after I open for so long. Or by choosing to install a backflow prevention device, dental professionals can proceed like normal and they don't have to worry when their patients slurp that straw. <sighs> hey, thanks for watching everyone. I know this is kind of a gross one, but we all can learn something from our past and move forward and help create a healthy environment and safe environment for our patients. And don't forget to come back every Thursday for a new video. See you guys later.